Good morning, my dear brothers and sisters. Today, the church liturgically celebrates the 20th chapter, excuse me, the 20th Sunday after Trinity, and I am basing my sermon this morning upon the gospel appointed for today, coming to us from the 22nd chapter of the Gospel of St. Matthew, and I will read that passage to you right now. Jesus said, The kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king, which made a marriage for his son and sent forth his servants to call them that were bidden to the wedding, and they would not come. Again, he sent forth other servants, saying, Tell them which are bidden, Behold, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen and my fatlings are killed, and all things are ready. Come unto the marriage." But they made light of it and went their ways, one to his farm, another to his merchandise. And the remnant took his servants and entreated them spitefully and slew them. But when the king heard thereof, he was wroth. And he sent forth his armies and destroyed those murderers and burnt up their city. Then saith he to his servants, the wedding is ready, but they which were bidden were not worthy. Go ye therefore into the highways, and as many as ye shall find, bid to the marriage. So those servants went out into the highways, and they gathered together all as many as they found, both bad and good. And the wedding was furnished with guests. And when the king came in to see his guest, he saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment. And he saith unto him, Friend, how camest thou in hither, not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then said the king to the servants, Bind him hand and foot, and take him away, and cast him into the outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth, for many are called, but few are chosen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, my dear friends in our Lord Jesus Christ, in this parable that I just read to you, in this passage that I just read to you, coming to us from the 22nd chapter of the Gospel of St. Matthew, our blessed Lord tells the story. He tells the parable of the king who was throwing a great feast, a great wedding feast, a celebration for his son who got married. And as was the custom in those days, as opposed to what we typically do today, normally, there are exceptions, of course, but back then, there was no specific time, there was no specific date set. Basically, how it would work, as we heard mentioned here today in this parable, as our blessed Lord told the parable, basically what would take place was the person would send out an invitation saying, look, I'm going to throw a big party. And I want you to be there. So you're invited to my party. I'll let you know when it's ready. And so as the days and the weeks and the months, what have you, went by, and the preparations were taken care of, and everything was prepared, and when everything was ready, then another invitation would, an announcement, if you will, would be sent out saying, Hey, remember that party I invited you to? It's ready. Everything is set. The table is set. It looks beautiful. The food is ready. It's going to be delicious. It's going to be wonderful. It's time. And so everybody would, would make their way over. But in this case, in the parable that I just read to you that our blessed Lord told, those who were invited, as he stated in the parable, those who were invited 
when they heard the announcement that everything is ready, they made light of it. And as our Lord said, one went to his farm, the other went to his merchandise. In other words, all of a sudden, the great feast, the wedding feast that the king was throwing for his son, was not so important. Other things were suddenly took precedence. Other things were suddenly more important. One went to his farm to take care of things there. One went to his merchandise, meaning is a, is a shop holder, a business owner. Again, he was going to take care of what needed to be taken care of at the shop. Now, as an aside, bear in mind, these two examples that are mentioned specifically, are, are they necessarily bad? No. In other words, the example that our blessed Lord, he could have said, well, instead of coming to the feast, one went carousing and one went partying and one went to the racetrack. No. These were actually valid excuses, if you will, but yet our Lord is showing in this parable we need to focus on what takes precedence. We need to focus on what is truly important. We need to focus again. And in this case, what the parable represents. And of course, in this parable, we have to be reminded the king that's throwing the feast, number one, represents our Heavenly Father. The son who is getting married, again, is represented of our blessed Savior, Christ the Son, of course. The banquet, the party, the feast, if you will, what does that represent? Of course, it represents heaven. We are invited to heaven. Those servants the king sends out to make announcements that everything is ready and everything is prepared, of course, those represent, if you will, the prophets of old, the evangelist, even St. John the Baptist. They are the ones who announce the things of God, the things of heaven. Prepare ye the way of the Lord said St. John the Baptist, of course. And then, of course, those who were first invited, the ones who made light and didn't show up because they, uh, other things were more important, those that the early church fathers tell us, these were the representative of the Jews. The Jews made light of Christ's invitation. And then those who, again, the king afterwards said, go out into the highways, go out into the byways, invite both the good and the bad. Those represent the rest of us. In other words, the Gentiles, non-Jews. Of course, dear friends, we have to recall and we have to remember that, of course, this shows the fact and our blessed Lord is emphasizing this in the parable that he, that he spoke of. Our Lord is emphasizing the fact that all are called. All are invited. Again. We hear in St. Matthew chapter 13 verse 47 it says, Again. The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a net that is cast into the sea and gathered of every kind. And also in 1 Timothy, the first epistle of Timothy, chapter 2, verse 4 says, Who will have all men to be saved and come unto the knowledge of the truth. The point being, dear friends, as I state and as I'm trying to emphasize, is that all of us are invited 
to the wedding feast. All of us are invited to heaven. God wants all of his children. Again, it's not just the Jews, but it's also the Gentiles. It's not just the rich, but it's also the poor. It's not just the males, but it's also the females. It's not just the blacks, but it's also the whites, and so on and so forth. All of us, dear friends, God includes us as his children and loves us dearly as his children. But as the parable is spoken, as we heard the parable spoken by our blessed Lord, it is our responsibility to come to the wedding feast. It is our responsibility to accept the invitation or conversely to make light of it, to be more concerned with the things of the world. The point being quite sadly, and again I, I make this point all the time because I'm not only preaching to you, I'm preaching to myself. So often we as people of the world. So often we, as human beings, we are much more concerned with things of the world than we are concerned with things of heaven, with things of God. Again, we hear in the first epistle of St. John, chapter 2, verse 15 says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. And then elsewhere in the Epistle to the Romans, chapter 12, verse 2 says, And be not conformed to the world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind. So many of us, dear friends, we are conformed to the world. We're more interested in what the world has to say to us. We're more interested in what the world dictates to us is important. We're more interested in what the world values and holds what the world holds to be valuable. We should be more concerned with what, again, God, our Heavenly Father, considers to be valuable, not the world. And then finally, in Colossians chapter 3, verse 2 says, Set your affections on things above, not on things on the earth. Friends, let us remember again, let us be thankful first and foremost that God has invited all of us the good and the bad, you and me, all of us. Let us be thankful that God has invited us to the wedding feast. Let us again do our best to be mindful of things above, not here below. Let us again not be so concerned with things of earth that we miss out on the invitation, that we take seriously our responsibilities first and foremost to be sons and daughters of the Most High, children of God. Let us always remind ourselves that as, excuse me, God himself that is inviting us to the feast and it is something for each of us to look forward to to desire to contemplate our place above and to be again once we're invited as we heard at the end of the parable to again be suitably attired if you will to be dressed respectfully. This day, dear friends, may God continue to bless, 
May God continue to guide. May God continue to inspire. May God continue to keep you close to his most sacred heart. And may God bless each and every one of you this day. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. God bless you, dear friends.